Hello everyone and welcome to our first webinar for Microsoft Project Streamlined. I'm very excited and happy to have you all here for this kickoff webinar and I hope you find this course material useful and the webinar is enjoyable as that's one of the goals for this course to not only provide good training but to make it as enjoyable as possible. So before I get into the agenda I'd like to go through some webinar housekeeping issues. So if you can hear my voice please click the raise your hand icon you'll find it at the top of the screen there's a my mood icon just highlight that and uh, click the raise hand indicator and that will let me know that you can hear me okay all right with that out of the way um, you can click on that icon again to uh, lower your hand and just pick the I'm fine option and that will take your hand down thank you the next thing I need to let you folks know is that we are in listen only mode for this webinar what that means is you can respond via the chat box so questions and concerns will pop up and I'll respond to them one at a time also the telephone for this telephone number for this webinar is and this is not a toll-free number so you have the option of listening through your computer and not using the telephone that works quite well actually all right before we get started here if you're experiencing any delays or uneven response in the webinar it can be due to a couple of things the, one of the main reasons is the speed of the internet connection uh, when you signed into anymeeting.com, it actually did a test on your connection, the upload and the download speed, and you got a grade for that connection. If it was lower than a B, uh, a C is acceptable. Uh, if you got a D or an F on your uh, download speeds, uh, you may want to pursue other internet connect connectivity options because your experience, not only in the webinars, but on Udemy where the videos are hosted is going to be not um, not what you want it to be so anyway before I uh, move on from this item I want to show I want to demonstrate to you how you can check your own internet speed so here on the screen I've brought up an Internet Explorer browser I recommend using Internet Explorer it tends to work better with anymeeting.com um, but I'm going to go to speedtest.net which is a website that independently tests your internet speed. What you want to do is you want to wait for the begin test button to appear. Don't click the start now button. That's a uh, that's an advertisement. But, uh, when the begin test button appears, I click on that and it's going to test my internet connectivity with a local um, site. 23 milliseconds for a ping is very good. 20 megabits per second for the download speed is very good speed. You see, I'm averaging better than 20, 23, 24. That's excellent. And the upload speeds, uh, let's see what we get here. Usually, as, as long as you have uh, more than one megabyte or near one megabyte, you want, don't want to go much under one megabyte, uh, you're in good shape here. You're seeing I'm getting five megabyte upload speeds, which is excellent. So 23 millisecond ping, 20 megabit or better download speed, and 5.3 megabits per second upload speeds are excellent speeds. You can check these on your own. Okay, closing the browser now and going back to the any meeting um, homepage. Next thing that can cause problems with your webinar webinars can be your browser. Again, I recommended you use Internet Explorer, but uh, Chrome will work, etc. All the different browsers will work, uh, from what I can tell. Uh, I.e., Internet Explorer seems to be the most stable. But if the sound or the video is cutting off, sometimes just closing your browser and then uh, restarting it up and re-entering the meeting can clear up the problems but uh, more often than not it's not the browser it's your PC and uh, so just a tip uh, you may want to reboot your PC before each of the webinars and uh, that way you'll ensure a good connection so just remind yourself to reboot your computer before the webinars if you seem to be experiencing any problem during any of the webinars that's, uh, that's a good uh, way to help improve the performance Okay, the next item I got on my housekeeping list is, as with any of these new internet social situations, your participation greatly enhances the experience, so please make liberal use of the chat pods. Use them at any time. Feel free to type in questions, comments, jokes, you know, whatever. Be part of the conversation uh, via the text box. It, it helps these webinars tremendously. I will, of course, attempt to answer all the questions, uh, but one of the things that usually happens is your question will often result post-meeting in me having to go back to my lab here at the office and create additional materials for follow-up or exercises. So uh, I try to answer all the questions, but sometimes they take a little post-webinar work. So uh, again, don't let that stop you. Those are very valuable to improving the course. So again, I can urge your participation by entering questions and comments into the chat pods. They help greatly. 
And keep in mind that the webinar is being recorded. I edit the material and turn it into a recording for your viewing later. So you can watch again if you think you need to catch up on something that was missed. I should have that by the end of the day after the webinar. And I will send a link to you via email on where to watch that video. Okay, before I get started with tonight's agenda, let me give you folks a little background on myself. I've been a project manager since 1985, where at Inland Steel I was a project engineer. I got my PMP around 2002, uh, but as far back as 1994, I've been teaching Microsoft Project at IUPUI. IUPUI has basically been my empirical lab for the last 15 or so years, so, but around 2004 I had a student come up to me and say, Hey Kevin, why don't you just teach the essentials? And skip all this other stuff that we don't really need. And uh, that was a very good suggestion, and uh, it was a epiphany for me. And at that point, I went on to create the five keys approach to learning Microsoft Project. Um, so I started recording my lectures, and then I ran the course via the Internet using the video lecturing technique, and it went well. So uh, bring all this up because I wanted you to know there's a lot of background in this material. It's not just something that was cooked up recently in the last couple of years. It's got over 15 years of testing and experience from using Microsoft Project. And I don't just teach it. I use Microsoft Project and in the way it's taught in the in the method here, the five keys method, in my actual job as an enterprise project manager. I've used it on mainframe downsizing project. I use it on a, a brand new data center we built in Lafayette, uh, Indiana, and it works quite well. But it isn't perfect, of course, and the content, nothing's perfect. And then the, and the content within uh, the, the video content, you'll see I, I constantly improve and work on it to make it better. But the, the project approach, the five keys approach, is highly honed. It really gets to where the rubber meets the road with this product. So uh, you're not getting a lot of fluff. You're getting what really you need to know to use it to run anywhere from small to very large projects and to be successful with it. The interesting thing about the Streamline course is this is a further iteration where I've taken that five keys material and whittled it down as far as I could to get just the essentials. Streamline course is a distillation of the best of the five keys method. It isn't, it doesn't downgrade it, it just makes it very focused. Okay, so if there's, I'm going to get started with a re review of tonight's agenda. Each streamlined course is tailored to the needs of the participating organization and thus can be structured a little differently. For the streamline course you'll be reg registered in, you'll get a separate schedule that will list the date of the all-day class session and any live webinar sessions that are included. For example, below is a sample schedule that shows a progression of six weekly one-hour webinars occurring before the all-day class session. Your class setup may be different. It may be a combination of pre-recorded webinars made available along with a, fewer week, uh, with a few weekly live webinar sessions or possibly more live webinars. Again, refer to the schedule you get with your course from your organization. Keep in mind I also have seen some situations that even though the weekly prep webinars were made available, a number of the student par participants decided to do cram sessions where they simply watch all the videos and watch uh, recorded versions of the webinars just prior to the all-day session and then they attend the all-day class. It's possible as the recorded webinars are one hour each and the uh, Udemy videos in total are a little over four hours. It's not the rec recommended way to take this course, but I have seen some students do it that way. The thing that makes this possible is that the videos on Udemy are available for you to for your are available to you for a lifetime. They don't expire on Udemy. Once you're registered, the videos are always there and available for you to go to Ud Udemy and go back and use them. So that is the beauty of this course approach. You can determine how much preparation you need prior to the all-day class, and if you have the option of live webinars made, ava made available to you, you may find those question and answer sessions in the live webinars are very helpful. So again, prior to the all-day class session, there will be made available to you a combination of live webinars and or pre-recorded webinars. And the key thing to note is that after this kickoff webinar you're watching now, in total, there are basically five weeks of video preparation you should plan for. Each week should consist of watching approximately 10 five-minute videos on the Udemy, finishing out that section, and then doing any skill exercises or sample exercises that are included at the end of the section. And then we do the review web webinar. And again, whether it is live or recorded for you, you should be ready for the all-day class total review if you go through each one of these week by week. 
In other words, the best approach is as a student, you should be working on one streamlined class section each week. So the first week is easy. That's the kickoff webinar, webinar you're watching now. And again, it can either be a live or a recorded uh, session. The following week, the work begins by working through the navigation section videos on Udemy and then again a live webinar or possibly a watching a recorded webinar of the navigation section. And this proceeds week after week until you get to the all day class. And even if you are a veteran user of Microsoft Project, I wouldn't skip any of these videos as they tend to cover gaps in the material you may not realize you have. So it's a good refresher. I myself find even in teaching the courses that watching the videos, videos that I created, I am often reminded of how certain features work that I had forgotten about, even in the basic materials. So again, if you're following the recommended approach in the first week, you should try to get entirely through the navigation section. Then in the second week, it would be the task linking materials, etc. So that by the last section, calendars, you've watched the videos and been to the webinars and are prepared for the all day session. Again, keep in mind the videos are chunked into five minute sections, so you should be able to get through them fairly easily. And remember, you can watch them on your smartphone, so you can do some time shifting there too to get through the materials. Some sections you definitely will want to spend time with are the task linking section, as that presents the all important task linking dashboard at the end. You definitely want to understand how that works. It's not difficult, it's just not intuitive, thus the videos make it easy to understand how to do it. But you have to watch the videos, and again, uh, that is task linking in section 2. Section 3 in the Udemy videos for this course is another one highly recommended for viewing. It covers the critical path method, which is the key scheduling technology used in Microsoft Project. And the videos go through some of the finer points of that and, help you, and will result in helping you do a better job of managing your project schedules. Then section 4 is on task constraints. This is easily one of the most misunderstood topics in Microsoft Project, I cannot stress too strongly the importance of watching the constraint videos in Section 4. Again, re remember, depending on how the course, is, course you're register, registered for is structured, in addition to the Udemy videos, for each of these sections you may have the opportunity for live weekly webinar participation to get your questions answered before the all-day class. And again, in other cases, you may only have access to the recordings of the live webinars, and uh, which is still very good to watch, as your questions and concerns may very well be brought up by another student and covered in the recordings. Also, keep in mind that each webinar usually focuses on a story problem or a skill-based exercise that is typically included at the end of the uh, Udemy videos. Thus, the webinars tend to be a review of the video materials, but also the goal is covering the story problem or skill-based exercise that was part of that section. So by working through these videos and doing the skill-based exercises or story problems for that week and then attending or watching the webinars, you should be well prepared for the all-day session and also well prepared to use Microsoft Project successfully in your work in creating project schedules. Now typically the last part of the all-day session is spent on working on what is called a project simulation exercise that will test the skills you should have learned in the course. But keep in mind again each course is tailored differently for each organization. In other words the simulation, simulation exercise may be replaced by a more in-depth uh, review of materials and a more in-depth question and answer se session. Okay, in this next section of the agenda I'm going to demonstrate how you sign up for Udemy uh, user access. Udemy.com is the site that uh, hosts the videos. So I'm, I have on the screen here a browser and I'm going to go to www.udemy.com and when I get here, I want to sign up. Okay, I could sign up with Facebook or I'm going to sign up with email. So I'm going to put in a new user. I'm going to be Kate Geza. And this is just a temporary Gmail account uh, that I'm using. Don't try to send me email at this account. That won't do any good. And now I'm going to create a password for Udemy. It's not my email password. It's just my uh, Udemy pa uh, new Udemy password I'm going to create. So I've put that in and I click sign up. And there you go. 
I'm into the Udemy app without any problems. Now the, the next issue is how do I find the course material? So I'm going to go straight to the address for the course and is at www.udemy.com and it's the Geza method streamlined is the full URL that will take you to the course. So going here it takes me to the home page and, and as you can see here it shows you what the uh, course is about and it shows you the general uh, structure of the lectures uh, and if you want to show this to somebody else you can show you can have them watch the free videos on calendar basics different ways to display tasks task outlining basics and uh, basic linking using lag and lead time uh, there's some of the uh, option or free videos that come if somebody you just want to demonstrate it to somebody without taking them into your account but uh, to take this course you would uh, click redeem a coupon and I've sent you the coupon code you would type that in there and as soon as you hit the apply button you would be enrolled in the course and you'd be able to access all the material and then that's it once you're into Udemy it's uh, good for life uh, when the course ends you still have access to this material it does not go away unless Udemy goes away and um, from what I can tell Udemy is going to be around a long long time they're doing a great job they have uh, instructor, instructors such as Jack Welsh from GE creating courses and they are really doing a great job of promoting the, the, the site and it, it's a unique concept. It's a way for educators to not only um, create their material but uh, to get paid for it which is a, a unique proposition and uh, if you've ever tried to create any of these courses you know how much work it is so it's, a, it's, it's great to be able to do this and and not just give away your learning material. So I like Udemy. I, I like the way it delivers the courses. The sound quality is excellent. The video is very good. And the experience is not too bad. Once you get in there, you, uh, we'll demonstrate at the end so you can see what it's like. Okay, so you go to Udemy.com, sign up for an account. You saw how easy it was to sign up for Udemy. Uh, use the coupon code that you've been sent. Um, and again, you get lifetime access to the materials. Uh, and our goal here is to get you ready for the all-day class. So the videos are the bite-sized chunks that feed the knowledge into your brain. And then the webinars are like little meals we have where we get together and review that and put, start putting it together. And then the banquet is the all-day class. That's the approach, and uh, it, we believe it works, so uh, we hope you enjoy that approach. Now the other thing to keep in mind about Udemy is they have an um, iPad and an iPhone app. So if you have an iPhone or an iPad, you can download their app and take the course while you're in the mall, um, out for dinner, you've got five minutes, uh, go through another video. Time shift. Also if you have an Android phone, if you have the newer versions of Android with the ice cream sandwich operating system, I've seen uh, the browsers with the newer Samsung phones play the Udemy site without any problems. Uh, if you have an earlier operating system or an older phone, you may have problems and there is no Android app for Udemy it may be coming. I got a feeling uh, what, the way Udemy approaches things is since you can watch this in the newer versions of the browser they probably won't be providing an app but you never know. And of course you can watch the videos at home on your own laptop or personal computer. Okay so that's how you get access to the course material but keep in mind the videos and the webinars are all additional ways to earn PD. So here on the screen, here I have the PDU categories from PMI. If you are getting this course through a PMI chapter, this course would qualify for Category A PDUs. If you are getting this course directly through your organization, then this class qualifies as Category C PDUs, as only registered education providers and PMI chapters can offer Category A PDUs. Scrolling down to Category C, Self-Directed Learning, you can see how watching the videos definitely qualifies as class category C PDU work. Also working on the um, individual problem assignments falls under an informal learning activity. So again be sure to document your hours spent as each one hour of self-directed learning activity counts as one PDU. Uh, there's of course a limit for PMPs, 30, no more than 30 PDUs in 
per cycle can be self-directed learning. Another thing to keep in mind is that under Category B, Continuing Education, these webinars qualify as a PDU. Um, so you may want to investigate uh, how you record a Category B PDU, and there is no limit uh, on the Category B PDU. So that's another way to add to the additional ones you'll get. Now, also keep in mind, watching a recording of a webinar, I do not believe is going to count under Category B. I think that may be self-directed learning. And obviously the reasoning there is to be continuing education. You have to participate. So when you're in the webinars and you're using the chat, that is uh, participation, whereas uh, watching the recorded webinars is uh, passive. Okay, the next thing I need to cover is if you do not have Microsoft Project yourself or access to Microsoft Project, how you would get to it. And before I get to that, let me point out that Microsoft Project 2010, Microsoft Project, and Microsoft Project 2013 are basically identical. Uh, 2010 was the first ribbon version of Microsoft Project. All the videos are done in Microsoft Project 2010. The recent release, Project 2013, from the desktop user experience for scheduling with the Microsoft Project Professional or Standard. It looks different than 2010, but it the functionality is identical. Uh, the colors are different uh, in Project 2013. It has the new green Metro look to it, which uh, of course is probably Microsoft's way of getting it ready for the Windows 8 phones or iPhones pads and slates out there. So, you know, it's it's moving f from a laptop or desktop centric type of application to be able to access it anywhere. So I think that's a lot of what's behind the redesign in 2013. Uh, they, do, they did fix a couple of minor bugs in 2013 and the tabs in 2013 are all in uppercase letters. So here on the screen you see what Microsoft Project 2010 looks like and now let me bring up Project 2013. And there you can see they are the same, but they're different. The Again, the graphic interface is different in 2013. Uh, the tabs are all in capital letters in 2013. There is a new reports tab. Um, a lot of this reporting in the key, five keys method is done strictly with a Gantt chart because that's the core way to uh, create your reports in Microsoft Project. But uh, if you wanted to dabble in the report section, feel free to do that in 2013. But the individual tabs themselves are very much identical to what you see in 2010. Uh, the other main area they've changed in 2013 is the backstage. It, it has the same functionality. Uh, it just looks different. Uh, for example, the options in 2013 are identical except for the coloring, uh, the graphical interface as what they are in 2010. So my point there is whether you're using Project 2010 or 2013, the training still applies. It is the same product basically except for a couple of minor changes. Now that takes me to the next question. If you need to get Microsoft Project, if you don't have it, you can go to www.microsoft.com slash project. And on this page, it always takes you to the most current version of Microsoft Project. And you can go for the Try Now button here, or I recommend you go up in the menu and pick Try or Buy, because that will give you access to two different options. Uh, the first one, of course, is the Try for Project Professional 2013. If you don't have Project 2010 or 2013, you will want to lo download the Try Project Professional 2013 from this button here. It will give you the option to download uh, the 60-day trial version. And by downloading the 60-day trial version, that will give you all the so access to the software you need. Now, I want to take you back to that Try or Buy option because there's another option here, Project Professional for Office 365. This is a new offering. I'm going to click that Try button. Office 365 is an excellent long-term approach for you, by the way, if you want to go beyond just the 30-day trial for the Office 365. And, and again, keep in mind here that you're, you basically are getting access for free for 90 days through these two options. But uh, Office 365, the monthly fee, you can buy it per month versus 
if you go out and buy Project Professional, it's around $600 or more. But the Office 365 is $35 a month. And the great thing about Office 365 is it is always the most current version. It up updates it for you automatically. And also, the other great thing about Office 360 is, again, you can get to it from any PC. The unusual thing is it actually downloads a copy of a Project Professional uh, 2013 to the PC you're working at and then streams updates to it as you go. When your license runs out, of course, it's smart enough to know that to check and see if the license is valid before it lets you continue using the program. So that's a little odd. It's a little different than something you'd experience with Google Docs. Google Docs, you go to the website through any machine, and you're working on the document basically through the web, whereas uh, Office 365, it's on your machine, almost like an App V type uh, installation. Okay, so summarizing again, what you want to do if you don't have Project Microsoft Project 2013, you want to go to the Project Professional and you want to try it. And of course, if you want to buy it, you can. And uh, there is a buy option there. And as you can see, uh, it is not cheap. So you may want to examine that Office 365 approach. Okay, to close out here, before I go into a review or an uh, demo of the Udemy site is uh, for each weekly webinar you will receive an invite and you also will receive uh, some uh, homework for it, uh, either a uh, story problem or a skill base exercise. Okay, to close out tonight's uh, kickoff webinar, again, how you get to the course material, the recordings, is you go to udemy.com. You'll need to, of course, create your account and then after you've done that you come back in and you log in on all future uses and then easiest way to get there is to type in gaza method underscore streamlined into the URL after www.udemy.com just as you see it here on the screen that will take you to the course and then uh, just start going through the individual lectures while you're taking the class if I have any announcements for the course you'll see them appear in the announcement section if you have any questions for me of course you can send me email or you can just type in a question here and it will come to me through the uh, course interface. Okay, to demonstrate some of the other features in the Udemy uh, interface here, I'm going to go down, I'm going to, just for uh, demonstration purposes, I'm going to start the lecture on task constraints. You see it pop up on the screen. And before going further here, I've hit the pause button on the lecture itself. It gives you a description of what's going on in the lecture. Again, if you have questions about the course, you can type it in the questions tab. But the nice thing is the notes section. Uh, you can type in things like, I left off going going through the deadline constraint type. And you can leave yourself little breadcrumbs to, you know, where you left off or things you want to save for yourself. And, of course, you can download those notes. And it's, it makes for a nice little learning experience. So the lectures I've got autoplay on, which that means is as soon as the lecture I'm on, finishes it will play the next lecture in the stream and you can check them off as you go to show you've completed it so you can mark off the lectures as you go through and then as it's playing of course you've got control over the volume and you can go full full screen by clicking the full screen button and there you go that's that's the basics on how uh, Udemy works and uh, hopefully this introductory kickoff uh, We'll get you to where you need to go for the course material. Again, if you have any questions for me, feel free to send them to me. And I look forward to working with you.